And let it make sense or not make sense, you're practicing. This lady and the people that follow her are Bible dumb. The next time you hear Sarah Jakes execute a text and preach the gospel will be the first time you hear Sarah Jakes execute a text and preach the gospel. This is a woman who is devoid of understanding the scriptures. It's 3 and 15 after Eve has it be, be, uh, eaten from the forbidden fruit. Yeah. The, God tells the serpent that the seed of the woman is going to crush his head. But he also says that the seed of the serpent is going to bruise her heel. Mm -hmm. And so I have been really, really helping so many women understand that just because your heel has been bruised by a divorce, by a teen pregnancy, doesn't mean that you can't crush the serpent's head. This is a woman who has said many things on multiple occasions when she does try to go through the text, this is a woman who is horrible when it comes to understanding the text. Going so far even to say that people ought to or sometimes have to forgive God. And so if I'm honest, while I was studying, something came to mind and I didn't even know if it was proper to say. But I felt like in order for Zacharias and Elizabeth to stay faithful, that they had to be willing to forgive God. When Peter was speaking about Paul and some of the things that he has written uh, being difficult, notice what he says in verse 16. He says that in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and the unstable distort as they do also the rest of the scripture to their own destruction. This is her. She is a person who, when you listen to her, you don't hear the gospel. You don't hear her teaching or going through anything about salvation. You don't hear her talking about even the end times. You don't hear her talking about even spiritual gifting. You don't hear her talking about how the church ought to be. You don't hear her talking about, let's say, the church and their relationship with Israel, things like that. No, you'll never get that. What you will get is a story time, a kind of a, a pep rally about how you can have the best things in life, how you can be great. You carry that thing. You write the book. You make the songs. You start the business. You do the nonprofit. It's in you. It's in you. And you got to be willing to release what God put inside of you. You're not just in those rooms because you're talented. You're in those rooms because you've got word. You're not in that room because you're beautiful. You're in that room because you got word. Why you got in the room is an excuse. Once you get in the room, release what God gave you. It's all about you, what you have in you, what you can be. The best thing about it, you can write a book, you can write a story, you can start a business, all those things. But you don't hear her talking about leaning to the word of God. You don't hear that at all from her. So that lives can be changed, touched and transformed. You got word in you. Word, good word. You can't be exposed to all of this word and go home thinking I'm not qualified. Even if you have to say, I don't know, I feel like God said, say it. Now, a couple of things. One, she says being exposed to all of this word. The problem is, the irony is, they're not being exposed to the word. Now, her word or someone else's word, but not the word of God. But on this issue about feeling unqualified, just say it. Remember, she's a person that was put forward to be, I guess, kind of the heir apparent. So it's almost as though she's saying, fake it till you make it. And let it make sense or not make sense. You're practicing. And you're not going to go from silent to master unless you're willing to practice where you are. So practices, and which is pretty much what she's been doing, practicing the word on people. Now, she's not really practicing the word because she gets little bits and pieces, little chunks, because she doesn't know anything about the word. What she will do is, though, she'll try to be, you know, kind of be be cute and be like everyone else and and make folks look at her a certain way and and try to make a connection with them. Whoa! I feel like there's a shift taking place in the world. And only those who are willing to break out of their routine are going to be able to be on the cutting edge of what God wants to do in the earth. And while you could grieve your routine, you may mess around and miss God. God needs a few crazy people who don't mind getting out of line. God needs a few crazy people who don't mind upsetting what they've known so that they can step into what God wants to do now. See, it's all about what God wants to do, but not just what God wants to do, but what, what God wants to do in you to make you better. This is where she, this is how she's been taught. This is where, how she was brought up. She's not been brought up to teach anything. She's not been brought up to, to share the gospel or go through the scriptures. No, that's not her issue. Her issue, her focus is you growing in whatever your potential is. Your potential, not in the gospel, not in the church, but whatever it is you can be. If you want to be a writer, if you want to be a business owner, whatever it is, 
this is her whole goal. This is her whole message. She is who, like many others, like her father, are those who is described in uh, 1 Timothy 6, 5. It says, in constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagine that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness is a means of gain. In other words, godliness is the gain. But they suppose their godliness is that the way that you get gain is by acting godly, by putting this facade on. That's what they do. And so you get people to come to church or to come, I should say, come to this building, this organization where they can uh, promote themselves, promote their brand. And guess what you're going to find when you go to those churches? You're going to find their books. Uh, you're going to find their books, their different items they have for sale. Because again, this is about promoting them, building them up. God told me it was like a tornado. And when you were turning, that your praise was destructing every plan of the enemy. And every time you turn, God says, I'm putting wind to break up the ground. I'm putting wind to go after that weapon. That's how the weapon goes. I keep turning, and he keeps turning, and I keep turning. Again, none of these things are biblical. These are just stunts. These are just things that kind of make you forget about the word. As a matter of fact, again, what will not be featured will not be the word. Again, this woman is Bible dumb, meaning she is ignorant of the scriptures. As a matter of fact, she's not so much even Bible dumb. She seems to be Bible hesitant. She seems to be anti-Bible. She, she seems to have a Bible phobia. She seems to not want to promote the Bible. Can I tell you something? David never called himself an underdog. We did that. David knew that there was something down on the inside of him that no one else could see. I only looked like the underdog to everyone who was fighting the battle, but I knew something about myself that made me stand up to that giant. This is only about you being something special, you having power, and about you getting out of light what you want to get. Now, question, where does she get that from? You're always serving other people, but God wants to serve you. Receive. Something that blasphemous that God wants to serve you. This is the kind of things that she's been taught. These are the kind of things that she promotes. But what does Jesus say? He says you cannot serve two masters. Either serve him or serve money or serve the world. It is clear who they are serving themselves to the detriment of the body and to the detriment of the gospel. As a matter of fact, the Bible speaks about people who listen to her, who tolerate her. She is like a Jezebel. She is like what Jesus is speaking of in Revelation 2 20 says, but I have this against you that you tolerate you all who tolerate someone like a Sarah Jakes. You tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself. She calls herself a prophet or a preacher. And all the prophet is, is someone who, who announces, who informs, who tells, who utters, who brings revelation. She calls herself that and she teaches and leads my bond service straight. So you want to keep listening to her? Fine. You'll suffer the exact same fate that she will. You go to her because you either have gotten something or you want to keep getting something. This is what Jesus brought up in John 6, 26. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. These were people who Jesus, now this is Jesus actually feeling that they, they received something. It's one thing to see the signs and get dazzled, but now you want something that applies to you. You want something for yourself. And so they were hungry, and so they were filled, including the people who were healed of something. And so they followed him, but they didn't want him for him, but they wanted what he could do for him. That's what she's promoting. That's her whole ministry. You cannot be a Christian who only wants the things from God. If that's all you want, well, then I can promise you this. You are not a Christian. If, all, if your whole focus is like her ministry, which really isn't a ministry, unless you want to call it self-serving. In that case, she's not serving the body, but she is self-serving, just like her father, just like that entire horrendous, I don't want to call it a church, but for lack of a better way to put it, this pseudo church. And so if that's what you want, if that's what you're after, then you cannot continue to call yourself a Christian. You can, but you're fooling yourself. I can promise you this, that heaven knows. And those people that want to follow her, well, you're going to suffer the same fate. You don't desire like babies, like newborn babies, the word of God, like babies desire pure milk. No, you desire the things that can come. You desire to be something special, to be a business owner, to be an author, uh, to have your, to be some sort of influencer, to have fame, power, money, whatever it is. You desire that 
rather than desiring him. And if that's what you look for, well, then you know what? You might actually get it. You might you might see this as an opportunity for networking and for hobnobbing and so forth. You might get all those things that you want. But what you will not get following her is heaven. Mm-hmm.